I thank everyone for, uh, uh, for, for being here, uh, for, for coming to this talk. Uh, the talk's going to be a little bit different from, uh, from some of the others, uh, where this is an experience report. So this is uh, me uh, talking about uh, coming to Clojure, uh, what my initial experience was, and how I saw things uh, mature to the point where Clojure has kind of taken over everything that I want to do. Uh, I've been to a couple of conges. Uh, this is the first time I've had an opportunity to, uh, to speak. Uh, uh, after three years, uh, that little red dot is where I spent two of the last three years uh, not moving outside that dot. Um, so I'm certainly happy that we can, uh, we can come back to uh, a presentation here. When I talk, uh, I, I'm actually uh, of the opinion at this point, not that uh, closure is like good or nice or comfortable to use in finance. My argument is actually that finance desperately needs uh, the features that, uh, that closure has. Uh, so let's make it uh, comfortable. I'll start with a, a rich Hickeyism. Uh, the only thing you can do with information is ruin it. Uh, so I feel like uh, when I saw Rich uh, say that at a presentation that we had a personal connection, I think he was really talking to me, like he could kind of look, at, look out into YouTube and make eye contact with me saying, Phil, you ruined it. And I'm like, yeah, fair, I've done that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that, that, that happens. Uh, another quotation, by the way, so mutable stateful objects are the new spaghetti code. Uh, out of all the things that I kind of heard in, uh, in, in presentations, this actually comes off of the, uh, uh, the, the Closure Rationale uh, website. Uh, this actually makes a lot of sense. I'll make reference to this one again later, but uh, coming from the world of of uh, uh, Python is actually uh, resonated highly. Uh, one more for Mitch, uh, by the way, solve problems, not puzzles. So uh, I'm not coming from the Lisp world or even from the, the world of, of developer. I'm coming from the finance side and I really just want to solve those, uh, those problems. Uh, sometimes it gets a little ugly. I'm not entirely sure that this is what Rich uh, had in mind when he said that, but that's what I heard. And I already said we had a connection, so uh, that, that's the way that I view it. Uh, when I say I'm, I'm coming to this uh, uh, from a little bit of a different side, I am a practitioner, so I have uh, 35 plus years in the, uh, in the finance world, uh, working with uh, uh, large banks, uh, large organizations. I was a portfolio manager for 10 years at an investment management firm, uh, worked at a top tier uh, bank using a, a Python for risk modeling, uh, another top 10 hedge fund uh, top 10 hedge fund using uh, uh, Python again, risk modeling. Uh, over 20 years of experience using uh, Python in that space, uh, and that actually marks it back to the beginning of NumPy. It predates uh, Pandas, if anyone's uh, familiar with that popular package. Uh, just, uh, I'll, I'll go briefly through my entire formal training in computing. Uh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> I was a, uh, a freshman in college uh, taking a mandatory course in Fortran 4, and if anyone knows Fortran 4, that was a way long time ago. That was acoustic couplers in the computer lab across campus. Uh, when, when I, I actually uh, didn't have a positive experience, by the way. That, that's why that ended. Uh, I presented a, a solution to an exam or something that, that I thought was better, faster, cleaner. Uh, it wasn't the right answer. It wasn't the way that I was supposed to do it. I said, I'm done. No more computer programming for me forever again. Uh, 10 years later, I'm an investment manager, a portfolio manager at a quant firm. Uh, again, this dates back to a point in time when there is no, uh, there's no Julia, there, Jada do, doesn't even exist. There is no Python. Uh, I'm actually working in APL. APL, the granddaddy of all array programming languages, uh, that was what we had, and uh, that's my attitude towards, uh, towards risk management, the types of uh, uh, things that I do in, uh, in finance. Uh, eventually, uh, APL was, uh, it was, even then it was a dying language. Uh, eventually, uh, NumPy gets added to the Python ecosystem. I'd actually used Python uh, for a couple of years as a glue language, what it was designed for. It got this one capability, and all of a sudden, it just ate everyone's lunch in the data science world. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about closure and less about uh, uh, some of that stuff. Uh, uh, my experience, I'll, I'll kind of give you, it's a happy experience at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, spoiler alert, here we go. Uh, write language, uh, write database environment. Uh, I actually think that's, uh, that's key for finance. Uh, appealing front end, 
didn't think that I'd ever uh, uh, be interested in, uh, in doing front end uh, programming, uh, but was blown away. And then uh, I actually have last the, uh, uh, the, the data science uh, toolkit, so TechML and Tablecloth and, and uh, uh, some of these newer libraries. And for me, that's the last part of the puzzle that came into focus. So it's not here because it's least important. In many ways, it's the most important for me, but it's the last one that I think, as an ecosystem, has really uh, come into its own. Uh, last thing here, so I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go to Conch and, and try to make the argument that, uh, you know, financial services and closure is a good fit, and it turns out that, yeah, it's the number one thing that people are doing with, uh, with closure. Uh, that being said, I am talking uh, about a little bit different side of it. This is, uh, uh, this is a lot more from the, uh, the quant side, from the kind of the data science integration uh, for, for finance. Uh, when I submitted the talk, uh, I actually uh, actually had some of this alphabet soup uh, on, on the top line. So DFAST, Dodd-Frank Act, CCAR, Comprehensive Credit and Risk Analysis. Uh, uh, th this was the, the, the problem that first kind of turned me towards saying, hey, maybe I should be doing this in closure. Uh, I was a little concerned that I'd have to kind of explain the relevance of it. This all came about 15 years ago when we had the 2008 crash uh, of the uh, financial system. Uh, fortunately for me, about a month after the talk was accepted, uh, Silicon Valley Bank comes along and puts it back on the front page. So I'm like, thanks guys, $200 billion bank failure, biggest since then. Uh, and of course, it's still in the news. Uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, First Republic uh, took a 50% hit on their valuation. Uh, tomorrow morning is a much anticipated release on some of what happened over here. Uh, so at a tier one bank, uh, what happens is in February, uh, white smoke uh, comes out of the chimney and the Federal Reserve comes out and says, here are your stress scenarios. This is what you have to, uh, to go out and report against. But a month later, they come out and say, here's the model uh, that you have to do. And then uh, clock starts ticking. You have a certain amount of time before you have to report back to them uh, what your results are. Uh, now, I was, I was at a, a, one of the big banks, a trillion dollar bank. They were just a little bit behind doing this in, uh, in Python, uh, timing wise. Uh, so they said, well, we have resources, we'll just add more resources to this. Uh, and when you uh, are behind on a project and you add more developers, anyone been through that one? Yeah, it, uh, it went about the way it said. So let's stick a pin in that for just a second. Uh, that's what's going on during the day. Uh, nighttime, nights and weekends, my brain is spinning. I'm going, there, there are some real things going on in the way that we're implementing these. We're, we're doing kind of a quadrillennial rewrite of, of systems, uh, uh, things are, are, are breaking in ways that they shouldn't. I looked at some other languages. I, I said, not because I wanted to switch, but because I wanted to be informed as to how things happen otherwise. So the top line uh, quotation there, I think, is, uh, is, is what I was thinking about. Uh, I boiled it down to three languages that, that, that were of interest, uh, Scala, Go, and Clojure. Uh, Scala, at this point in time, so this is about six years ago, by the way. Uh, so. So Scala was kind of going through their, uh, their Spark bump, right? The way that uh, Rails had their little, uh, Ruby had their Rails bump. So Spark, everyone needed Spark, right? Uh, didn't matter if MapReduce was really your problem. Everyone was like, sight unseen, I need Spark. Everyone was gaga for it. Uh, turns out when I uh, uh, started working with Clojure, my reaction was that I was kind of like coding Python in the JVM and was not of any interest uh, uh, to me whatsoever. Uh, Go wasn't appropriate to the, uh, uh, to the data science uh, kind of analytics space. Uh, probably didn't belong on the list. Uh, Clojure uh, ended up on this list just because I knew a couple of developers that I had high regard for. And they all said the same thing, that, that a Lisp language makes you think about your problem uh, differently. So uh, stayed on the list. Uh, flipped back to my day job. <laughs> Right? Remember, things uh, are, of course, starting to crash. Uh, Python, everything, everything inside a Python uh, instance is mutable. You pass it off to someone else, uh, you have no idea what's going to happen to it. Uh, you add developers uh, to a project, and of course, this was, uh, this was a real problem. I suppose uh, I, I can actually remember the night, the evening, that I was going through like a closure presentation. Blah, 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 immutable data structures. I'm like, ah. I get it now. <laughs> it's in my face, and, and it, it, I realized that uh, it was not just what was going on there. 
<coughs> an entire class of, uh, of problems were, were swirling around this. Uh, so I said about uh, taking uh, the, pro oh, by the way, the, uh, the bank project was uh, successfully uh, completed on time. Uh, I know everyone in the room was concerned, oh my gosh, did they get it done? Uh, so everything was fine there. Uh, but still, I'm like, let me see if I could do this uh, a better enclosure. Uh, and I, I figured I could step through it. It was basically a large Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, so that's pretty easy to code up in any language, even if you're not an expert. Uh, so I said, let me set about doing this. Uh, Python uh, used uh, multiprocessing to do this. And there are all sorts of edge cases and, and, and sharp, uh, uh, sharp things in, uh, in Python enclosure. Once I had those uh, immutable data structures, all of a sudden I could just use threads. Uh, load up everything and, and process forward. Uh, Clojure uh, kind of started out with two naive implementations, about 20% faster. I optimized both. I really know how to do that a lot in Python. I still ended up in about the same place. Uh, Clojure was about 20% uh, faster, 25% smaller, and I'm saying at least 1,000% uh, more reliable. Uh, that I looked at it and said, I can do other things with this. I can, I can do other projects. I can, I can have other developers involved, and things aren't going to fall apart. Uh, However, uh, it, it wasn't all happiness. Uh, this, this was uh, dialed back a little bit in time. Uh, it's a Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, what's, what's going on here is at each step in the process, uh, a, a bond or a wholesale credit uh, a loan, which also has a rating, might migrate through time. Uh, that's fine. Now, remember I said that the bank had, had done with their thing. This is me going, you know, just kind of figuring out how to do this uh, on my own. So I'm working without, uh, without the bank numbers, uh, without all their, their inputs. Uh, I didn't want to touch anything that, uh, that the bank had touched. This transition matrix uh, comes off of a, a, public, uh, a public research paper, uh, so I could grab it. Now, the problem that I had was, was this transition matrix was a three-month transition matrix. I was going to model monthly. Easy peasy piece of cake fractional power of a matrix. Uh, that's what I set out to, uh, to do. That's all I needed to do. It turns out that uh, uh, I was using Encanter, uh, which is an impressive uh, piece of work, uh, kind of state of the art uh, at the point in time that I'm doing this. Uh, I couldn't find it. Uh, in Python, it, it's just a function call. In R, it's a function call. In MATLAB, it's a function call. I'm like, where is it in Clojure? Uh, couldn't find it, but I'm like, no problem. I've heard all this great stuff about Java interop. So go out in Java. It's got to be there in Apache, Math, Commons, something, something, right? Couldn't find it anywhere. Reached out to the community, uh, kind of came back with the answer of, oh, just do it in Python and load it in. I already said I completed the project. Uh, so that's essentially what I did, is I just took the one number that was missing. But this was a little bit of a, a sore point for me. I was feeling that I couldn't do everything that I wanted to do. I even went so far as to say, I'm just going to transcode the, the Python stuff, bring it into Clojure, commute, contribute to the community, you know, wave a flag, and it'll all be great. Uh, but digging inside Java, uh, you know, the Cholesky decomposition, and it uses a sure decomposition. Some of it was there, some of it wasn't. Turns out one thing that I needed was in a private method somewhere, and I threw my hands up. Uh, I'm not a Java programmer. Uh, I, don't, I didn't want to be. I was pulled too deeply into it, and I said, OK, I'm just going to stick a pin in this, and this is a problem. Uh, by the way, this has a happy ending. Uh, uh, one other point that I, that I had, and it, this was another kind of bone of contention. So here I am. I'm new to Clojure. I'm coming along. I'm bumping into things like this. Uh, and I, I'm sure there are plenty of people in the room that would look at it and go, yeah, duh, stupid. But uh, And apparently, the right thing to do would have been to wrap that, that 40 that in, in an int, and the whole thing would have worked and been uh, performant. Uh, this, to me, I just kind of marked as a, I, I'm a noob to the language, and maybe I don't get it. But uh, things like this you know, shouldn't happen. Now, I'm not going to harp too much on it. I got a very informative answer uh, and a correct answer as to you know, why this was the case. Uh, and I did realize that. I'm kind of playing chess against myself, you know, Python on one side, closure on the other. I'm an expert over here, and I'm complaining about this. So that all being said, uh, things like this were, were little, uh, a little difficult for me to deal with. So my initial, uh, my, my initial take here was that uh, Java, the, the JVM and Java interop were impediments to me in terms of adoption. 
I was coming from the Python side and it may be fine for other folks in this room. I know that uh, most people come to Clojure from Java. So you know what a streamed pushback reader buffer whatever is. I don't, I don't want to know, to be honest. Slurp is fine, but beyond that, uh, I, I really don't want to get involved. Uh, I have Emacs as a negative. I'm probably making all kinds of enemies here, so I apologize, buy you a beer later. Um, but in terms of going to other developers and saying, hey, here's this cool thing, here's this environment. I had used Emacs before. I was able to transition back into it. I had gone away for a while. I had the Emacs pinky thing going on. Um, but uh, uh, it, it, it was a negative for me. Uh, libraries, I already, already complained about uh, fractional power of a matrix. I'm, I'm still grumpy about that at this point. Uh, library maturity in general. Uh, the last point, the, the tool set, I think is actually good. I should probably take that off. But uh, alpha, alpha is a scary word, okay? Uh, so when I think about taking uh, what I've done and going back to a major bank, if I'm using tools deeps alpha and spec alpha and alpha versions of XML libraries, it's a little concerning, right? Because it kind of says that something here is going to change. You know? So we like to talk about the stability, but, but you know, queuing up this way is a little bit of a problem. So anyway, uh, successful feeling so far uh, with Clojure, uh, with, with two, uh, you know, two bumps in the road. Uh, let me talk just a little bit about uh, financial data. So financial data, uh, the types of analysis that I'm doing is going to generally fit in memory. Right? There are only so many stocks out there. There are only so many bonds you might have, only so many things that are going to fit in a portfolio. So we can load up in memory and do things. So that's uh, significant. It's also dirty, messy, messy, noisy. You know, they, sometimes it's actually intentionally obfuscated by, uh, by someone on the other side. Uh, it's expensive, very expensive. Uh, Bloomberg likes it that way. Uh, and the pricing requirements are going to be such that you're going to have to pull from multiple sources so that when you load up an environment and start doing an analysis, it's not a table. There are multiple things. There are yield curves over here and volatility measures over there, which may have come internally from, from your own quant teams, uh, you know, underlying prices. It's, it's all over the map. Uh, it's a complicated world. Uh, this is just a small set of uh, some of the standards that you might bump up against in the world of finance. Uh, uh, the top one, FIBO, uh, is a financial industry business ontology. So ontologists sit around and come up with 2,700 different entities that, uh, that, that could be in your system. Trying to fit this into a SQL table is never going to happen. Uh, the only other one here that, that I'll mention actually is XBRL. This is the one that caused me to have to seek out a specific library inside Clojure uh, that's just the alpha version of the XML uh, because it had to be namespace aware. Uh, going through a taxonomy set just to read uh, an annual file, filing is going to boil down to going through as many as 30 or more uh, XML files. Uh, i make a comment. So, so triple stores uh, were the thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to do it all along. In fact, I used RDF uh, way before I saw Datomic. So when I saw Datomic, it made sense to me. It, that, was, that was the data world that I wanted to work in. I'd used, uh, I'd used Jenna and OpenRDF, some of the earlier implementations. Uh, but I actually never deployed it into, uh, into a large bank or anything. Uh, there were practical limitations uh, that I felt just, just didn't work. You know, one is just native. Uh, RDF, the way they handle lists or collections, it's a, it's a bit of a disaster. You know, it's a linked list. There are multiple assignments. There are numbered predicates. Uh, of course, in Datomic, you have a collection. Boom, you're done. Uh, it, it just works. Also, uh, since I'm working with financial data, if I have a large number of securities and a large number of dates and I just want the price, uh, in SQL, of course, you just have a double uh, you know, two keys or two columns in your in your index, right? Multiple index, everything is going to work fine. Uh, trying to do that in just native, you know, off the shelf uh, RDF triples in one of these stores doesn't work. The the Sparkle query is going to be inefficient one way or another. You start you start with the uh, security and scan all the dates, or start with the date and scan all the the securities. Uh, it's just terrible. The first time that I saw Datomic and realized that they'd come up with yeah, a tuple type just build it into the system. 
don't make me build it on top, it's great. So uh, here I found that I had the, uh, I had the right data structure. Uh, <clears throat> I actually put this slide in uh, before I realized that we we're opening up with an XTDB talk. Uh, and I think in, the, in this room, there was, a, there was a flurry talk, or no, there's one next door, or it was, yeah, so. Uh, so I, I actually uh, think that this is a huge step forward for the, uh, uh, the ecosystem as I saw it. That, uh, that having these options, well, see now, I was gonna say having these options, having an open source you know, option, and then this morning they kind of ruined it for me and uh, made Datomic uh, you know, free and open source. Uh, that, that's a good thing, actually. So having all three of these options, I think, is a big plus. Uh, in terms of declaring a winner, I'll actually say that I use all three of these. Uh, that, that for the reasons in the XTDB talk, by temporality, I'm glad that he covered it a bit, I can just say, by temporality, like if you love temporal, how could you not love that, right? Uh, but especially in finance, going back and saying, I'm gonna do an analysis, I need this data as it was then, but I need to load it up now because I didn't know until someone walked down the hall and said, load this data in and analyze it in this way, uh, I, I didn't have it. So XTDB, go to there, Flurry, uh, I mean, data defending itself, doing an accounting system, yeah, that's what you want. Uh, and Datomic, you know, scaling to 80 million customers with credit cards. I mean, that's kind of impressive by any standard. Uh, and of course, that doesn't even address this, uh, database time. Uh, the temporality is, is great. In the world of finance, uh, the reproducibility of a report, people, people use this term all the time, uh, but in finance, more so, I would argue, than any other uh, place that you want to look, the data is changing all the time. Uh, we can have one table that may have 100 or more batch files that are banging on it all night long, loading things in. Uh, and what ends up happening is, is a, a report is generated. Someone, say, in the London desk is going to look at it. Uh, and you know, either it works or doesn't work. Uh, you know, a couple hours later, someone on the New York desk wakes up, goes, and it works. Well, why does it work? Because some developer that knew that things kind of break and we check them and, and kind of update and try to be self-healing. It's not health self-healing. It's, a, it's a, someone coding over there trying to fix it up before the guy looks at it in New York. And then the question comes up. It's like, what's different? Why did it change? And nobody knows. You know, theoretically, there's a, there's a SQL log file out there that nobody could look at, right? Uh, compared to, to any of the databases on the previous screen, we know exactly what we do. We, we, we go, we see what it was, we can see everything that happened in between with essentially zero extra effort. So uh, we're doing good so far. So at this point, I have, I have the language that I want, uh, although I'm still not totally in love with the ecosystem. Um, I have the data environment that I want, and I'll talk just a little bit about uh, front end. So front end, uh, people are always, you know, gaga, where's our Ruby on Rails? Don't want one. You know, where's our Django? Don't care, right? Routing, uh, database, and templating. That's your typical uh, web framework. And I'm just going to flat out declare a winner here, okay? So in terms of the, the web handling, by the way, so Ring, I'm... I'm good with, I like it, I saw it. Um, I'm a fan of uh, Pedestal uh, because I'm gonna say at the end that the interceptor pattern, I, I've seen the closure community kind of uh, coalesce around that and say this is the way that we really ought to do things. Uh, you know, routing, uh, uh, you know, rate it, uh, whatever they're doing up there in Helsinki is awesome. Uh, database integration, uh, data log in any one of those databases. <clears throat> and templating, hiccup, it's like, I don't quite get why we need anything other than hiccup, especially when I can do it front end and back end. Now, the first time that I uh, saw a closure script, uh, I was at an NYC closure meetup. Uh, I went, I heard people talking about how great this was. Uh, I gotta be honest, I didn't care. Uh, I'd always, you know, in Python or, or R, done all the analysis I need, figure out how to spit it out in some JSON form, you know, it goes off to some other team, some 
JavaScript guy uh, picks it up and puts it on a cool web page, and, and we're good. Uh, I thought that was going to be my life in, uh, in Clojure. Uh, anyway, I, I go to this meeting, and I ate their pizza, so I might as well see what's up with, uh, with ClojureScript. Uh, even at that, when I saw it, I, I kind of walked away, and uh, totally honest, I, I was like, yeah, but maybe not, because I've seen efforts like this uh, to bring Python into the web. Another one just started a, a month ago, I think. Uh, and I never saw that being successful. I never thought that, uh, uh, that I cared. I kind of considered it a parlor trick, right? Like, ah, that's kind of cool, but I don't care. Uh, I did go back, uh, start doing it, experimented with it, and it was like, oh, I can do this stuff. Uh, and as it matured a little bit, originally CLJS JS was a little, little scary to me, uh, but once Shadow CLJS uh, came along and I got my hands on a, on a high quality uh, tutorial on what Reframe was all about, and that was like a, another light bulb thing. All of a sudden I realized this was the future of how I was going to deliver everything to decision makers. <clears throat> I won't go through the other things on the screen uh, on the right. It looks like the same chart. It's actually generated once with Plotly, once with Vega Lite, once with D3, I think once with straight SVG. Piece of cake. I can do that. It's not a problem. A uh, little blurb on the bottom is just a screen capture of using uh, Blueprint JS, AG Grid. AG Grid is a commercial product. They have a free, free version. But in terms of high quality components for delivering absolute state of the art, nobody can beat what I can do features uh, to show to a user all of a sudden, all those became available to me. Uh, so front end, all of a sudden, was a thing for me. Uh, Reframe 10x, uh, absolutely, absolutely love using. Uh, one item that I'll uh, call out here specifically was uh, Helix. Helix is a, is a newer addition uh, to this world, so I actually dug kind of deep into uh, what I could do with, uh, with ClojureScript. Helix kind of brought me the, that last mile. There were things that uh, weren't available in, in Hiccup, uh, you know, trying to put together a separate component that has hooks. Uh, it really completed, made it be a 100%. I can do anything that anyone ever thought of doing in NPM, uh, in an NPM package in, uh, in React. Uh, so at this point, uh, things are looking pretty good. I have the database, I have the language, uh, I have, the, uh, I have a, a front end capability that I didn't expect. Uh, that I would have, but uh, I still haven't addressed the, uh, uh, the kind of the data science side of things. Uh, one thing that I'll say is uh, absolutely uh, critical for someone you know, coming as a domain expert, as someone coming from another language, that what they, what what they encounter can't be hostile on day one. Right? So, so you have to come and, and find something that allows you to work. Uh, something like saying, okay, well, here's, uh, here, here's your new database environment, okay, you log into AWS, and I'm like, no! It's like, one does not dabble in AWS, okay? Uh, it, you know, if I were Voldemort, I would hide all my horcruxes over in, in there somewhere, right? Uh, it, 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 it can be a lot, uh, so, so that low, and, and by the way, that's, that's why I said you know, entries into the space like Flurry, one jar file, you know, an empty folder somewhere, and you're off and running. I mean, oh, and by the way, can you, can you hit a web endpoint, right? Anybody can do that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go back to grumpy me, right? I, I was still grumpy about my, uh, my fractional power of a matrix. Uh, uh, the bottom line here, uh, the bottom two lines, uh, is, is a solution. Uh, once, I, once I have uh, libpython CLJ, uh, and <laughs> anyone that, that didn't see uh, uh, Chris Nuremberger's talk from 2019, uh, I would recommend to go back and take a look at it. But the uh, uh, same two lines that it would take in Python. Import the thing, call it, done. Uh, and the other thing that this gave me is all of a sudden when I felt a little bit like an outsider, I, I don't know, the JVM, right? All of a sudden, everything inside that NumPy world uh, was available to me, all the SciPy functions. I no longer have, uh, not just this function, but I no longer have any 
anxiety about what I can do in Clojure. I can do whatever I want to do. Uh, so, so I have that available. Uh, uh, one other feature, by the way, so, so TechML dataset is, is, I guess, what I'm, I should have put it on the top, what I'm uh, making reference to here. But uh, a, a read buffer, uh, again, it's definitely worth, uh, worth going back and looking at what uh, Chris did with a, a read buffer. It was one of those things where I looked at it and it was like, yeah, he probably thought it was cool, but I think it's really cool. Yeah, I, I could look at it and say that, you know, having worked for a long time in the Python space, you don't have that. And because of the way that things are done, they will never have it. Um, and, it, you know, the, these, these pieces uh, kind of gave closure what it was missing earlier on. So I said I started six years ago, but really needed to see the this space kind of you know, mature into something that could give me everything that I wanted. So that not just like making me think differently about what I do in Python, but absolutely take it over. Uh, this is a list, by the way. So, so let's talk about data frames, right? So anyone uh, that's kind of bumped up against a, a Python. I said I started using Python when, when NumPy became available. So uh, Travis Oliphant wrote NumPy when he was working on his PhD, kind of took a little time off, got a little distracted. Thanks. Uh, and at that point, I saw that it was able to replace APL. The numbers could be calculated. Now, you still had to deal with you know, what row goes to what security and some of those nasty things. Uh, Error-prone process, once uh, pandas came along, they, they solved that problem. Now, that was, that was actually a, a five-year gap uh, that I was using NumPy without pandas. Now I kind of have a love-hate relationship with pandas because you know, I, I help other developers, but it's all nastiness that has nothing to do with solving the problem. You know, how do you do a multi-index? Do you drop the column? Do you, or it it's, becomes its own little world. And I was always frustrated that that would invade Clojure. Clojure had good ways of dealing with, with data, with the immutable uh, data sets that we had, and I never really wanted it. So, so a couple of these, so in Cantor, by the way, uh, I still use, uh, there's a lot of great code in there, but it's kind of gone dark on GitHub, right, for four years. Uh, a couple of these others, and uh, uh, I, again, I highly recommend uh, uh, <coughs> Chris Nuremberg's talk from 2019, but uh, toward the end of his talk, I, I have to confess, he made reference to Panthera, uh, which was doing what he had done for, for NumPy essentially, that, that uh, libpython CLJ, and saying we're going to reach in and bring the pandas data frame in. And, and I kind of winced a little bit. I'm sitting at home watching it on YouTube, right? But, but I was kind of like, no, I don't want it. I think that Clojure has this piece of the, the puzzle in hand. We just need the right way to be able to jump out and to get that calculation when we want it and have a more reasonable way of dealing with, with it. So the bottom line here is that I think tablecloth, uh, tech ML, uh, uh, data set are, are the, right, the, the right tools to, uh, to get us into that space, uh, to get us into that data science space. Now, uh, here I'm just kind of kind of skipping into a couple of other different things. Spectre, uh, if anyone hasn't seen it, remember I said that if I had an environment of uh, uh, you know this diverse environment of different things uh, that were going to be my pricing environment, uh, I have to figure out how to navigate that. And typically, in a in a typed language, the way that you're going to go about that is creating a class and teaching the class how to move around. Uh, it's absolutely not necessary. Uh, it's possible, uh, but not necessary in uh, in Clojure. But you have to have a pretty good way of reaching inside and not only. Uh, querying, but but updating uh, a, a data structure like that. So anyway, uh, Spectre was kind of turned out to be something that filled that need. Um, and uh, the, the the point of the second line there is that that when we pull things out of uh, any of the datomic style databases, uh, we might be using a pull. So it has structure. You already know what the structure is. Take advantage of the fact that you know that structure and can can use it in uh, in how you're going to navigate. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, that the pipeline processing uh, is something that I, I, I could be wrong on this, but uh, 
I, I'd say the last few years, I've really seen kind of an attention to this. Maybe it was just me waking up to what was already happening inside closure. That, that could be too. Uh, but this is absolutely my go-to for the complex uh, data pipeline processing that, uh, that has to happen for risk analysis. Uh, I think it probably all started with Pedestal. Um, and uh, uh, Sayapari, again, uh, the, the guys up there in, in Helsinki uh, doing, uh, doing a hell of a job. Exascale is another version. Uh, the plumatic graph is a little bit different, has a little bit take, uh, different take on it. It's more macro-based. Uh, so similarly, uh, generally speaking, the library's improved. Again, uh, read it is, is absolutely an impressive piece of work. Um, and Integrant, I, I actually haven't started implementing Integrant yet. I'm still using Mount. Uh, but notice, especially in those first two lines, that, that the closure community in general, it kind of started in both those cases uh, with some macros and said, here's, here's the solved problem. And I think, uh, I, I think it, not just in these, but in a number of other cases, we've kind of migrated to a point of going, hey, you know, we can look at this differently. We can treat these as data sets that we can, that we can deal with. Uh, Encanter is something where it was a big ball of mud, right? So they tried to do everything that R had ever done. You know, the data frames, the graphics, everything, but breaking it down and saying, okay, Kixi stats, just give me the calculations. And then tech ML data set or tablecloth, just, just give me a, a data construct that I can, uh, that I can work with better. Uh, tools, uh, obviously the tooling, has improved over time. Uh, I'll make specific reference here. Uh, cursive, I think, was uh, an important add once I got to it. Reason being that uh, people coming from Python know PyCharm. Right? So all of a sudden, you know, unlike what I said earlier with Emacs, anybody that's worked in Python will probably know this environment and probably understand when you present them with the IntelliJ version of how to do things in, in Clojure. Uh, Notebooks, I, I did have a, a previous uh, a screen, which I, or slide which I took out, but uh, a Clerk, I think, has hit the, uh, the, the notebook uh, concept exactly right. Uh, this is, uh, uh, apo well, not, not apologies, thanks to anyone from Juxt Pro. Uh, this is a, a bit of a ripoff of, of their uh, tech radar. I actually found uh, their tech radar on their website useful in terms of someone coming to an environment and saying w w what are kind of the best practices, the best libraries. Uh, so, and they, they've open sourced uh, this so that it looks almost exactly like their page. It's not quite exactly. Um, I think I combined their, their tools and infrastructure into one quadrant. Uh, that freed up a quadrant for me. That, that's the upper right. And all of a sudden I could fill it in with, like I said, that, that last piece of the puzzle. Uh, so, so these are libraries right now <coughs> that in finance, I'm finding uh, solves the, the data science part of the puzzle. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of generally speaking, uh, I find that uh, everything at, the, at this point that I'd ever done in Python or in other languages has been completely consumed uh, by Clojure. Everything uh, that I do, I want to do there. At this point, uh, I'm glad that those SciPy Python packages are still out there, uh, but I'm like, I'll, I'll work in Clojure and Python, uh, if, if I want you, I'll call you. <laughs> uh, it's my presentation. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a, you know, kind of a, a user experience, uh, but are there any questions about things that I should have done differently? If it's too harsh, uh, you know, meet me outside and tell me later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, maybe not. Uh, the, the, the last slide didn't, didn't really show up. Uh, there are some things. Uh, I'm, I'm using uh, BD, which also comes from the, the guys at uh, JuxPro. Uh, just, just a shout out to the, to the guys at JuxPro. Uh, they wrote BD. I'm still using it because I have migrated to, to rate it, which I called out earlier. Uh, they actually have on their tech ra radar that uh, that rated is the one to do. So, so kind of kudos for kudos for for saying uh, you know straight up uh, what the right thing to use is. Okay, thank you.